students and for shaping who they are. And so as they make a commitment to one another today, a profound commitment, I want to encourage us to also make a commitment, which is simply this, to be an ongoing source of support and encouragement in their new marriage and their new lives together. Sound good? So with that, let's pray and then we'll go into it. Heavenly Father, this is a good day and we attribute all good things to you. So we just want to start by saying thank you. Thanks for making Tyler. Thanks for making Melissa. And thank you for bringing them together. It's a sacred day, but it's also a day of celebration. And so we just pray that the work that you began in their lives a long time ago would be brought to fruition, would be completed. Today we commit not only this wedding ceremony, but this marriage to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Here it is. <laughs> Ready, Dad? <laughs> Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and father. school in PE class, they were badminton partners. How many marriages have been formed with the start being bad? <laughs> At least one. They maintained a friendship, and over the course of time, Melissa was clear to Tyler that she desired maybe something more than a friendship with him, and over time, he thought that was a pretty good idea. The feeling was mutually and fully reciprocated, and they began dating their senior year of high school. Tyler would see Melissa after his basketball or baseball games, and they would just spend a lot of great time together, hanging out, talking, sharing. Early on in their relationship, Tyler expressed his love for Melissa, to which Melissa replied, you don't love me, it's too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> so Tyler got the hint and waited patiently a couple more years <laughs> and finally expressed his love for her and to her again. And that was the good time, the right time to do it. Well, after graduating from high school, they attended different colleges. Tyler attended Oregon State, Melissa attended University of Oregon, and they focused on their studies. Tyler's was focus was in engineering and uh, Melissa in accounting. And um, all the while they were working on their studies, they were also growing as people. And they were growing in their faith. Periodically they would see each other and they spent time together when they could. But the time apart actually proved to be good. They learned more about themselves as individuals, but it also tested their relationship. Well, it also ended up confirming their love for each other. After graduating from college, they both ended up moving back to Portland. And in the time since, they've discovered new ways to connect and grow in their relationship. Exploring new places, attending sporting events, trying new restaurants. But regardless of where they are, you'll often find them <laughs> smiling and laughing and maybe crying <laughs> because they don't just love each other, they like each other. Well, fast forward to the summer of 2017, they just adopted a little dog they named Wyatt. And on June 3rd, while they went on a hike, with Wyatt as a witness, Tyler asked Melissa if she would be his wife. Apparently she thought that was a pretty good idea. So she accepted his proposal and they've been planning, preparing for this day ever since. One, one side note, but important note I wanna make, which is that in two days, 
Melissa's parents will be celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary. Okay. And that is also the same date as your grandparents' wedding anniversary, their 53rd. So this was gonna be the only week that you guys were gonna get married. <laughs> this week. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Well, um, I do wanna share, before you exchange vows, I wanna share some couple thoughts, really two big thoughts about a marriage. Um, people ask what the secret to a healthy marriage is, what the secret to a loving marriage is. And I want you to know, I don't think it's really a secret. Um, it's just the way God has designed it. And he's told us what marriage should be. He's told us what it should look like. And the reason why I say that is because I want you to both to have great confidence in your marriage. It's not going to be perfect, but it can be great. It really can. So a couple thoughts. There are few things when you think about it that are considered sacred anymore. Marriage ought to be one of those things. The Bible says that marriage should be honored by all. Marriage should be honored by all. And that word honored is usually translated as costly or precious. Marriage is costly this week, isn't it, Bob? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's to be treasured, it's to be valued, it's to be esteemed. It's sacred. And it says marriage should be honored by all, meaning even if we're not married, the institution of marriage is such that we all should esteem marriage. And the reason why is this is because marriage is about the mystery of two becoming one. One plus one equals two, somehow. Here's what God says. A man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. And they, they become one flesh. God's saying that marriage is a union. Um, yes, it is our closest human relationship, but it's more than that. It's not you just living under the same roof together, that would make you roommates. <laughs> marriage is something far greater, far bigger, far grander than that. It's based on something the Bible calls a covenant. A covenant isn't crossing our fingers and kind of hoping things work out. A covenant is an unalterable promise. It's a vow. It's a big deal. And it brings you together. The paperwork isn't what brings you together. Have you ever wondered that? Why, why do we even have to go through all this, right? Well, the paperwork's important in that it validates the commitment that you're making. But what really brings you together is the covenantal vow you're making to each other before God today and the physical uniting of your two lives together. So something else is happening as well. It's not just uh, two becoming uh, one. There's a third party involved. It's God himself entering into it. This is why Jesus says, what God has joined together, let no one separate. God has brought you together. That's important not only for you to know, but it's important for all of us to know. We believe God has brought you together. In marriage, it's as if God glues your two wills and your two personalities and your two minds and your two sets of emotions into one. Yes, you still live individual lives in that sense. You still make plenty of individual choices, but from this day forward, you are responsible for one another. And we are to see you as such, not just individuals, but as one. So it's like we no longer know where Tyler's life ends and where Melissa's life begins. It's just Tyler and Melissa. It's just the two of you together and it's beautiful, and it's profound. But here's what it also means. It means that Tyler, Melissa's joys and her fears become your joys and fears. It's not just her life anymore. It's also, her life is also your life, and vice versa is also true. Melissa, Tyler's hopes and his um, insecurities become your hopes and insecurities because you are no longer just two individuals. You are one, and isn't this what you want? I've officiated many, many wedding ceremonies 
And I've yet to meet a couple who said, you know what, let's just give this a few months and see what happens. <laughs> no, every couple expects and wants their marriage to last. So what I'm saying is, what you want is also what God wants. And this is why, isn't it true, that love songs that we hear on the radio or wherever typically incorporate words like always and promise and forever. Because there's nothing romantic about I love you occasionally. <laughs> I love you when I feel like it. <laughs> no, we want to be loved by someone no matter what, even on our worst days. This is why this union is so profound. So it's two becoming one. The second thing, the last thing, is that marriage works best, I believe, when God comes first. It's not that there can't be marriage and it can't be great. I believe that it works best when God comes first. Every wedding ceremony is amazing. It's beautiful, everybody looks dressed up, you know. Um, and this one's no exception, friends, family, environment. Just beauty everywhere but weddings can also be because of that a little bit misleading because Tyler I know you think you have but you probably haven't seen Melissa at her worst yet <laughs> there might be a day she doesn't seem quite as beautiful as she does in this very moment and Melissa I know you think you've seen Tyler at his worst but you probably haven't there might maybe come a day when he doesn't seem quite as charming and dashing as he does in this very moment. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Marriage, it's part of life. It's not always easy. It's not always particularly fun. It's not always romantic. In fact, there are tremendous forces both in you and outside of you that want to pull you apart. Um, here's the thing. Two amazing but flawed, but imperfect people are unable to do for each other what only God can do. Um, you are not going to be able to satisfy the deep, deep, deepest longings in each other's souls. Um, you complete me is just a movie line. I believe there is only one who truly completes you. I believe, and you do too, that there is only one who can truly satisfy the deepest longings of your heart and your soul. And that is God himself. And this is why it's important as it relates to marriage. Don't place the expectation on one another to do something that only God can do. Appreciate each other for who you are. With the good stuff and the flawed stuff. You're human. It's okay. Marriage works best when God comes first. So the verse says in Ephesians, Husbands, love your wives this way, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. He's describing the kind of love you are to love each other with. Not loving each other just when it feels good or when it's easy or when it's fun, but it's a sacrificial kind of love. It's not an entitled love. It's not a you owe me love. It's not a score keeping love. It's, I'm going to love you even if you don't love me. I'm giving my life to you no matter what. This is God's love for us. And the Bible says that that kind of love, that divine love, it never relents, it never quits, and it never fails. The only way you'll be able to love each other like this is to keep God first. See, I believe that God is the source of life and that he is the source of love, true love, the deepest form of love. And so that's why it's so important that you remain committed and connected to him because he will fill you with his love, that kind of sacrificial love, and out of you will flow that same kind of love for each other. It's not only what the Bible says, it's also what I've experienced in my 24 years of marriage. In fact, I will say this, in every couple that I know, where both the husband and the wife were committed to Christ 
first, those marriages not only lasted, they thrived. They were beautiful in every couple that I know. So don't make it your primary ambition to try to change the other person. Pray that they would be changed by the goodness and the grace and the love of God. Well, I like to end every wedding message this way. The question has been asked, is there anything more beautiful than a wedding ceremony of a young couple who loves each other and is starting their new lives off together? And the answer to that question is yes. It's the picture of a man and woman who have weathered and creased faces and wrinkled hands. And they've been married for years and decades, modeling the kind of love for each other that God loves them with. And they've passed that down, if God would provide, to their kids and their grandkids. You see, the wedding day isn't the most important day. The most important day is the last day. And from this day forward, make it your ambition that the last day will be the best day. Well, you are about to exchange Binding, unalterable promise. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> Just some of the most important words you'll ever hear. No big deal. You're also going to exchange some rings. Hopefully, we've got rings around here somewhere. And the rings are to be an outward, visible reminder of the covenant, the promise that you made today. And so, whether you're together or, or apart, as you wear the rings, may they re be reminders of this day. Tyler, have you prepared something to read? A French clergyman named Joseph Rue once said, There are people who laugh to show their fine teeth, and there are those who cry to show their good hearts. Since my teeth are less than stunning, <laughs> I really only had one option to win you over for good today. <laughs> I am so incredibly lucky and blessed to be marrying you. You're the type of lady every boy dreams of being with. You love life. You love making others happy. You fight tirelessly for the things you believe in. You never submit to anyone or allow a person to sway your actions. You are beautiful, charming, intelligent, silly, faithful, passionate, and loyal. I often wonder why God so gracious, why, is God, why God is so gracious and has allowed me, an average wannabe cowboy and crybaby, <laughs> to marry you. <laughs> I look back fondly on our relationship when I think about the memories we have made and the bond we have shared. I know your love for me is intense and constant. We have laughed and cried together, but your love has been unwavering. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for loving me unconditionally, always being honest, and encouraging me to do what makes me happy. Thank you for allowing me to pursue my own dreams and goals. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for the tough love when I need it. Thank you for joking, me, or joking with me and opening yourself up to teasing. One of, my, one of my favorite ways to tease you is to compare you to various types of animals. <laughs> it seems appropriate today to share with you the animal I finally determined you to be. <laughs> you may be surprised to hear that it is not the answer I gave for your, for your bridal shower games. Much to the joy of Grandma jo Joanne, I will admit you're not a rodent as I previously said. <laughs> no, Melissa, you are a donkey. <laughs> now, Grandma, please, before you come up here and lecture me again about why Melissa should be classified as a more elegant animal, let me explain. <laughs> Donkeys are hardworking, dependable, are quite intelligent, but also have a notorious reputation for stubbornness and defend themselves by striking with their limbs or, <laughs> or, or biting. <laughs> Although 
you occasionally display these characteristics, this is not why you are a donkey. <laughs> you are actually a specific donkey that had incredible historical significance. In Mark 11, 2, Jesus says to his disciples, Go to the village. There you will find a donkey that no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it to me. Jesus then rides a donkey into Jerusalem, where he is eventually crucified. Pastor Joel explained one day in church that this event was notable because the donkey, much like you, was unbroken and had never submitted to anyone before. However, recognizing the divinity of Jesus, the donkey uncharacteristically surrendered control and allowed the Lord to guide its journey. This ride sets a stage for Jesus to sacrifice himself for all of our sins. Melissa, <laughs> I can't help but compare you to this animal. Your blind willingness to submit yourself to Jesus is like a pillow. In doing this, you are so wise. You show us all that we can, we can be capable of so much. I see him guiding your journey every day when you display extraordinary patience and love. I see him guiding when you sacrifice so much time and money for others. I see it in your dedication to youth. I see it in your support for the elderly and the less fortunate. I see it when you love those who are unloved by so many of us. By allowing God to take the lead in your life, we are unable to see, or we are able to see the love and grace He has for all of us. Melissa, I vow to love you with all my heart and soul. I vow you to, I vow to love you when times are good, and love you more when times are difficult. I vow to make you laugh. I vow to keep you safe and healthy. I vow to cherish every moment that we share together on this earth. I vow to support you as you accomplish your goals. <laughs> and pursue your dreams. Most importantly, I vow to let God guide your life. He has extraordinary plans for you just as he did that special donkey in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. <laughs> I am so overjoyed to marry you today, and I am so incredibly eager to see what God has in store for you. Mm. I think you redeemed yourself on the road. <laughs> yeah, Tyler, do you have the rings? Yeah. We got this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Repeat after me. I, Tyler, take you, Melissa. I, Tyler, take you, Melissa. To be my cherished wife. Be my cherished wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I give this ring as a token. I give this ring as a token of my love and loyalty to you. Of my love and loyalty to you. As this ring is never ending. As this ring is never ending. So is my commitment to you. So is my commitment to you. Melissa, have you prepared something? <laughs> yes, I hate you for asking me to write my own vows. There's no possible way for me to cohesively summarize how my whole world has transformed over the past decade to you. But here we are. So this is my best attempt. When we met, I didn't have much of a vision for my life. At that point in time, I feel I was mean-spirited, inconsiderate, and self-absorbed. I was attracted to you because you were everything I wanted. You lit up the room with your positivity and laugh and intentionally worked to others make to make others feel good about themselves. In finding you and seeing how kind, caring, and good-natured a person could be, I gained the direction I was seeking. I wanted to become more like you. In this endeavor, you've been my biggest fan, while also pushing me harder than anyone else to improve myself and positively influence those around me. I can never thank you enough for walking with me through this transformation, but thank you. Thank you also 
also for caring so deeply for me, my family, and my friends. Thank you for teaching me what it means to put others before yourself 100% of the time. Thank you for pursuing God with me and encouraging me in my faith daily. Thank you for helping me work through my anxieties and learn to face the world confidently. Thank you for the grace you show me and the speed at which you forgive me. Thank you for accepting my faults and always making me feel worthy. Thank you for always knowing how to make me laugh and exercising that ability frequently. You're everything I ever wanted out of a partner, and you're everything I aspire to be. Tyler, I vow to pray for you ceaselessly. I vow to work as a team and problem solve in a loving way. I vow to always strive to make our love new, exciting, and extraordinary. I vow to always kill the spiders in the house for you and let you have the majority of the space on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I vow to always be the first to say I'm sorry, and I'll really try to pick my battles wisely. I vow to make an impact on this world for good, as you always encourage me to do. I vow to love you more each day, and always to assume the best of you and of others. I vow to be faithful, supportive, and grateful for you and your friendship until my dying day. I vow to never allow us to grow up. Thank you for taking a chance on me 3,247 days ago. <laughs> If you're having half as much fun as me, you're one lucky guy. I love you so much. Please never change. It's great. Melissa, I think you've got a ring for Tyler as well. Good work, Mitch. Repeat after me. I, Melissa, take you, Tyler. I, Melissa, take you, Tyler. To be my beloved husband. To be my beloved husband. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. With my whole heart. With my whole heart. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I give this ring as a token. I give this ring as a token. Of my love and loyalty to you. Of my love and loyalty to you. As this ring is never ending. As this ring is never ending. So is my commitment to you. So is my commitment to you. You may present. Did it. All right. <laughs> I know how important your faith is to both of you. And so you wanted to demonstrate that by sharing in communion. Just to take a brief moment and remember the Lord's sacrifice, remember his perfect love. And I think that would be a great way to start off your marriage. So when you're ready, Let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of marriage designed by you, intended to endure, to persevere, just as your love for us does. And may this ceremony be a reminder to all of us, whether we're married or single, that marriage is something to be honored, that it's sacred, that it's something to be treasured. I, I pray that Tyler and Melissa would remain devoted to each other so long as they're devoted to you and that their relationship would increasingly become an awesome reflection of your perfect love for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Both Tyler and Melissa, 
the witnesses of your covenant of marriage together before God and the witnesses gathered here today. I now pronounce you as husband and wife. Tyler, you may kiss your bride. <laughs>